Welcome back. This is Monty once again from DPL Surveillance Equipment. Uh, I'm the owner of DPL Surveillance Equipment. We run a full service surveillance and security equipment company. Uh, we have lifetime guarantees and warranties on all the products, 24-7, 365 tech, sales, and customer support. We have the largest inventory of state-of-the-art items that, are, that not only can you buy, but you can rent or lay away as well. Uh, as I typically mentioned, we revamped the website. Uh, I think it looks good. I think it works just fine. It's optimized for mobile, and uh, if you want, you can patronize it or take a look at it and see if you can learn anything from the humongous number of articles and videos and blogs and podcasts. All that information is free, so avail yourself of the opportunity to educate yourself on the numerous topics ranging from surveillance, counter-surveillance, um, achieving optimum health, longevity studies, uh, you name it, we have it on there. Now, today's topic has nothing to do with spy, spying or counter-surveillance, for that matter. Today's topic has to do with grading Donald Trump uh, on running the economy thus far. Okay? So let's dig right into it. Excuse me. The um, One of the main campaign uh, issues raised by Donald Trump had to do with uh, the infrastructure of the economy, roads and highways and bridges and such are in need of uh, dire repair, okay? Um, right now, I have to rate Donald Trump an, an F for failure, mainly because there are major issues with the infrastructure of the United States. In other words, as you travel along your bridges and highways, and uh, the, if you take a look at the, the mass transit systems, if you take a look at the way, the way airports operate, a lot of these haven't moved an inch, okay? There's major privatization projects that could be that they could be working on in other words blacks uh black rock carlisle group other major investors private equity funds are waiting for the go-ahead uh, for for such projects as the major airports there's a number of major airports that are supposedly we're going to privatize and be put into the hands of the uh, the private sector, so they can be renovated and upgraded and made more technologically competitive with those of some of the other countries outside the United States. But that hasn't happened, and it looks like it's not going to happen uh, anytime soon. So, um, F for failure. Um, when I take a look at the uh, transporta other transportation systems, uh, high-speed subways, uh, excuse the noise, but high-speed uh, subways, rail systems, they look to be so antiquated, for instance. When I take a look at uh, how we transport goods and services over the railways, those trains, uh, they look like they haven't been touched within 100 or 200 years or something. Big, giant, heavy, antiquated transportation systems, such as the trains in the United States, st still they're they're riding on big, giant steel wheels and and tons and tons and tons of heavy metals that haven't been touched or upgraded uh, as far as innovation in a hundred <laughs> years. So, um, <laughs> Uh, the, the way the FAA communicates with pilots, um, getting those, moving those planes around in the skies, um, uh, planes could do more to, to use um, some sort of alternative fuel sources, biodiesel, uh, biofuels, something that incorporates a little bit more of the things, uh, excuse me, that... Um, 
that, that we're using and experimenting with in cars and automobiles. Um, there's a number of individuals that have taken it upon themselves to retrofit car engines to burn um, vegetable oil or something. <laughs> These types of biofuels, there's no reason why we can't ultimately figure out how to use that in planes and, and different other things. Um, there's a wall that the Mexican, the Mexico government is supposed to pay for. I, don't, I haven't seen any checks change hands. I've never heard of a single payment from Mexico for a wall to be built. I'm hearing Congress and, 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 and Donald Trump talk and talk and talk about we're going to do something, we're not going to do something, we, we have the money, we don't have the money, but I haven't seen any payments flowing from the south to the north to construct that wall. Um, the there's there's a telecommunication system the system in the United States that needs to be upgraded. Um, we've been using three and four G forever, and the internet should be a public service, just so more and more people can educate themselves in terms of getting free information online or just connecting people. But the United States population falls way behind such countries as. South Korea, for instance, when it comes to internet saturation, um, we, we're just very, very far down on the list technologically in terms of both the speed of our internet and both the saturation of the internet. In other words, the availability of the internet for most people in the United States is still something that we, 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 we that mimics more of our undeveloped or developing country as compared to a, um, a developed nation. So Donald Trump gets a failing grade when it comes to innovation in our t with our telecommunications infrastructure. Uh, even the banking sector, we have a number of people who still don't have any idea what it means to be able to move money around <laughs> un uninhibited. Most, most individuals and citizens, we still pay way too much money. We spend way too much time um, moving money around. Uh, and the, as far as finances in, are concerned, uh, the, the, the idea that we're still toying around with uh, three, four, five day waiting periods and paying Western Union and MoneyGram and Citibank and Bank of America uh, tons of money um, just to move money around. And believe it or not, the Know Your Customer rules and regulations are doing far more harm than good. And we need to just basically take a look at everything that we're doing as far as um, finances are concerned. With the internet giving us the capability of, of, or the potential of doing more, we really need to do more as far as moving money around and, and such. There's no reason why we can't, we should have more decentralized peer-to-peer -peer, um, capabilities such as what Bitcoin offers and the United States is going to lose out to other countries, maybe Japan and Australia or whatever other countries, Malta, even the country of Malta, believe it or not, is more receptive than the people in the United States. The congressmen and senators Unfortunately, comprising mostly, being comprised mostly of lawyers is a major problem. Some other countries where you have more engineers, more people who tech are technically oriented in terms of actually doing things and fixing things and, and, and understanding how things work, uh, you, get, you get much more progress a lot quicker as compared to people whose sole job is to write laws. And um, without even considering that a lot of the laws are so old and antiquated that they date back to the horse and buggy era. So this is not helping us. This is hurting us. So you get an F for failure in that area as well. Um, education, same thing. Too many people ill-equipped for the future. 
studying for the wrong jobs, wrong careers. By the time most of the people get out of high school, most of the time when most people get out of college or whatever, they're not prepared to work in the new industries. In Germany, they have apprenticeship programs whereby you specifically work at a certain company doing certain tasks that exist today and you are prepared and the company is teaching you what you need to know right now. Um, United States, we, in the United States, we have done a very poor job in terms of forecasting where the careers and jobs are going to be as compared to focusing on what we need to know today. So if we can learn a lesson from Germany, for instance, about apprenticeships, that may help. <laughs> so you get a fail when it comes to job training and career advancement in the United States. Um, health. We spend way too much money on health. We have more diabetes that we're exporting and obesity that we're exporting than goods and services that other countries can actually, that, that they actually want to buy and pay for, okay? When your number one export is obesity and diabetes, that doesn't generate as much income for your country as compared to good products and services that everyone is willing to pay a whole lot of money for. So you get a failure, a F for failure in that area when it comes to health. So um, I just don't see a whole lot of progress being made with Donald Trump. The meetings with Putin seems to indicate a person who's desperate to work out side deals just in case this thing with Bob Mueller doesn't pan out. That's the only thing that I see coming out of those meetings is a desperate president who's trying to hedge his bets and protect his own butt just in case Robert Mueller just, uh, finds that there has been collusion, that there has been compromise, maybe even blackmail or something with the president. So anyway, that's what I see. Uh, someone acting desperately uh, to pre uh, for his own self-interest. And, and, and uh, he's already also preparing to tell you guys that when the recession comes, it has more to do with Jerome Powell's incompetency or whatever blame that Donald Trump could put on whoever else as compared to just acknowledging that the Federal Reserve has more control over these boom and bust cycles than anyone else wants to admit, okay? When the Federal Reserve was established, certain key people, politicians, business people, knew that there was going to be boom and bust cycles, recessions and depressions that came pretty much at the will of the Federal Reserve. That's not a big secret. Read the book entitled creature from Jekyll Island, and you can clearly see that the economy is manipulated and was designed to be manipulated from day one. When they created the Federal Reserve, they created the IRS. It's not a coincidence. They figured out a way to distribute money, and then they figured out a way to get the money right back <laughs> by way of taxes, and if you don't like it, you go to jail. And if, and if that's an issue, then they got guns, and they got tanks, and they got armies that uh, the same tanks and soldiers that go out overseas and they overthrow governments and they set up regimes that are friendly to the United States, they can turn that against the citizens. They have and they will. And if you don't believe me, look at the prisons. Look at the number of people who have had property taken away from them, either through eminent domain or whatever they want to call it. But that's how they take back a lot of the properties, a lot of the assets, a lot of things that you guys worked hard for, whenever you start doing too well, they declare a recession or a depression. And that means now your local bank or whoever bank, they can take back everything that you worked so hard for because it's a depression, it's a recession. And now since you can't pay your rent, can't pay your mortgage, can't pay your car note, guess what? There's a massive wealth transfer that goes in reverse. It goes from the pockets of the working people and to the people who print money, to the pockets of the people who, people who print money, okay? If you can print money, then you can give people money, charge interest rates, make loans to people, and if they don't pay back that money with hard labor, real 
real sweat labor, guess what? You take the property. If they think that you don't have leverage or that if they think the bankers aren't serious or the finance companies aren't serious, the government steps in, garnish your wages, throw you in jail, etc., etc., okay? So anyway, um, Donald Trump receives a failing grade in the area of, uh, you name it, protecting the citizens, handling the economy, the trade deficit is $20 trillion. That's lower than an F for failure. When you have $20 trillion in debt, you can't pay it off. There's no way in the foreseeable future that each and every citizen is going to be able to cough up $30,000, $50,000 a piece because that's approximately what you need to come up with if you wanted to pay off the deficit. You'd at least have to come and go into your pocket for that much money. So you got a failing grade in that area as far as your budget and your finances of the United States. The American citizen is way behind with their retirement savings and their overall savings. So I'm going to give the government a failing grade only because they should acknowledge that we just all can be consumers. Consumerism is dead. Consumerism is not the way to go anymore. People have to produce. The government needs to communicate that to people. Um, and you get a failing grade in that area as well. Nobody in government, high school education systems, K through 12, they're not talking about savings and investing. They're not even talking about responsible credit card management. You get a failing grade in that area as well. Cybersecurity, failing grade. There's way too many back doors, way too much pressure from the CIA, NSA, FBI to compromise your phone, your laptop, your computer. We can't tell the good guys from the bad guys anymore. Nobody has the, uh, r the right to have good encryption if you listen to the government because you, you may be a money launderer. You may be a child pornographer. You may be a gambler, okay? You're guilty before innocent, contradictory to what it says in the Constitution. So the government, Donald Trump again, receives a failing grade in the area of cybersecurity. So anyway, as, as you can tell, uh, I can go on and on and on and on, but I'm going to cut it short, let you guys think about some of the issues. If you agree, fine. If you don't agree, put it in a comment or, or respond or something, and we'll take a look at it and maybe have a reasonable discussion or debate. And lastly, the suicide rate has doubled within the last two years. More people are committing suicide People typically don't commit suicide because they're achieving too much wealth or achieving too much prosperity or, they're, or if they're too optimistic and happy. They commit suicide, just in case you don't know, when they're depressed, when they feel like they don't have choices, when they feel like everything is working against them as compared to working for them. So if anything doesn't convince you that we, you, you're being sold a pack of lies, look at the suicide rate. Look at the idea that some people are jumping off buildings, walking onto freeways, poisoning themselves, shooting themselves, whatever. That usually happens when people, again, feel like their world, as far as I can tell, has no future. As compared to having a good future and an optimistic future. So anyway, you guys have a great day. Sorry for leaving on a, a negative note, but... We need, it to, we need to rate the current administration on the things that are, that, that are happening or are not happening, rather. And uh, maybe next time we'll be able to come up with a more favorable report. So you guys have a good day, and we'll talk later. Thank you. Bye.